Look at this thick boy. Making Mega Chonkers look like Lock Cat. Best card in the box, calling it best card in the box. If you don't have it, then pack up your things, hit the red surrender button, and go over to Magic the Gathering Arena. Alright, welcome to Buy the Box Episode 4. If you don't know what this series is about, I encourage you to go watch the previous episodes. I explain it in more detail, but this time we're just going to jump straight into it. So today we're doing Chaotic Compliance for the main box to start here. As far as great cards go in the box, uh, yeah, I mean, once again, there's there's just nothing here that's, that's great. There's nothing that is competitively viable. We do have some good cards, though, and ironically, one's a super rare, one's a rare, and one's a common. So for the super rare, it's monster reincarnation. Has the effect to discard a card and just target a monster in your graveyard to add it back to your hand. A very, very simple effect. The reason it's not really a widespread card is because the discard one card is a hefty cost, as I've mentioned in previous videos of mine, and not every deck can accommodate that cost. Light Sworn decks do have cards they like to discard, they have a lot of cards that they would like to get back that they unintentionally milled, like Chaos Dragon Livianir or Judgment Dragon if it's a pure Light Sworn deck. So the card still sees play in Rogue decks, and it's really limited to Light Sworns, but if that's the deck you're trying to build, decent box to go through. As for the rare, it's Baby Sarasaurus. Baby Sarasaurus is pretty good. If it's destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, then you can special summon a level 4 or lower dinosaur type monster from your deck. As I've also mentioned in my previous videos, special summoning a monster from the deck is really strong. And the reason that effect is really strong is because it gets over the consistency issues that a lot of decks have. You don't really have to worry about opening certain cards if you have ways to special summon them straight from the deck. As I mentioned in my previous video about Water Exceeds, that's what makes Deep Sea Diva such a great card. However, the reason Deep Sea Diva isn't just straight up broken is because it can only special summon a certain criteria of monsters. The same goes for Baby Sarasaurus, but he actually is capable of summoning a better pool of cards than Deep Sea Diva, but what it takes to activate this effect is a lot more tricky and a lot more challenging, whereas you just have to normal summon Deep Sea Diva. Before Tech Genus got nerfed in the recent ban list, it was seeing play in some Tech Genus builds, and it still currently sees play in Labyrinth Builder Dinosaur decks. And this is another one of those cards that it's good right now, but it has so much potential to be even better. Dinosaurs have been a very strong deck in the TCG for a long time, and that's because they have a lot of support and they all use Baby Sarasaurus. We already have cards that work with Baby Saurus very well, like Miscellaneousaurus and Survival's End, and there are even better dinosaur type monsters that we could get that would make Baby Sarasaurus even better. So this card is good. It's good right now, but it has potential to be great. And the last that I think is in the okay category, as I mentioned it's a common ironically and that's planet pathfinder planet pathfinder is essentially a worse terraforming however i don't see us getting terraforming for a long time and probably not metaverse either maybe but planet pathfinder is kind of the best we got right now he contribute himself to add a field spell from your deck to your hand so like baby sarasaurus just getting cards from your deck is good because it gets over decks consistency issues and this card does see play it's seen play in a couple of decks this year, uh, namely Fire King and Middle Age Mech's Ancient Gear decks. However, it can reasonably find its way into any deck that uses field spells. It's also been used in Evil Eye to get their field spell. So this is another card that is good, and it sees play right now, and it has even more potential because I really think we are very far away from terraforming, but let's say we get Union Hanger with more ABC support, then this card will definitely see play, especially because it's also a machine type monster. Now moving on to the OK cards and Chaotic Compliance, it's kind of funny, they're all ultra rares. And to start, I'm going over 7 tools of the bandit. Pretty basic effect, when a trap card is activated, you can pay a thousand life points to negate the activation, and then destroy it. And it's also on a counter trap card, so it cannot be responded to. It's spell speed 3. The effect is good, it's just slow. That's its only problem. So if you open this card on turn 1 and set it, and then your opponent goes into their turn, they're not going to be able to activate any trap cards unless they're activated from the hand, which 
there's very little that can do that in Duel Links. So realistically, if your opponent has any trap cards, they're gonna set them on their turn and they can't activate them. It's not a mystical space typhoon and can't destroy it when it's just set. And it's very likely on that second turn, your opponent's gonna find some way to get rid of this card. So it can be effectively useless and it's not really gonna be able to find its way into any deck, but its effect is good enough for me to say it's okay. But another problem with it outside of how slow it is, is that it has been power crept by by Nightbeam, by MST, Cosmic Cyclone, and even Wiretap. There's just so many better options in this card. The next Ultra Rare that I think is okay is very similar to Seven Tools. It's Magic Drain. Essentially has the same effect, but it doesn't have a cost. And instead of negating a trap card this time, you're negating a spell card. And the balance to this card not having a cost is it gives your opponent an out. They can negate this card's activation by sending a spell card to the graveyard. And oftentimes this can put your opponent in a bad situation situation where they're going to have to choose which of their spell cards they want to lose. So the card is definitely better than Seven Tools of the Bandit. It's not live right now, but I think it could be in the right deck. But on the flip of that, it could also have the same fate as Seven Tools of the Bandit. So I'm content with calling it okay for now. And next up, we have Symbols of Duty, another pretty simple effect. Its cost is to send a normal monster you control to the graveyard, and then you can target a monster in either graveyard and special summon it. And then it has the similar caveat of a lot of equipped cards that can do something similar where if this card's destroyed destroy the monster and vice versa the thing about this card is its effect is really good. Monster Reborn is one of the strongest cards in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh ever, and it's been on and off the ban list in the TCG, and it will likely never come to Duel Links. And this effect is essentially the same thing, but what slows it down is its cost. Most decks are not going to be running normal type monsters, and if a deck is running normal type monsters, that's kind of the gimmick, like in a Rescue Rabbit deck, for example. And that's the kind of deck that I can see Symbols of Duty seeing play in. I definitely think it's better than Magic Drain and Seven Tools of the Bandit, and it has a lot more potential than those two cards. As of right now, just because Rescue Rabbit's in the game, I would say this card is okay. And with even more support, which there are a lot of support for normal monsters that we don't have in the game yet, this card could end up being competitive. And lastly, for the okay cards, we have the poster boy himself of Chaotic Compliance, and that's Black Luster Soldier. By himself, Black Luster Soldier is kind of bad. He's a ritual monster, and by extension, of that he has consistency issues especially because he's not a ritual monster that's part of an archetype that can help facilitate the consistency like Vendred or Necroz and when he hits the field he doesn't do anything he just sits there with 3,000 attack and he's a beat stick, which if that's what you want, then just run a blue eyes deck. However, the thing about this card is that it has a ton of support. And one of those support cards is actually a super rare in this box, and that's Gateway to Chaos that I'm kind of bundling in with Black Luster Soldier here. Gateway to Chaos can search out Black Luster Soldier upon activation, and that gets over some of its consistency problems. It also has an effect that revolves around counters, and it can remove three of these counters to add a ritual spell card, which there's a pretty good one called Super Synthesis Soldier. Uh, yeah, a tongue twister, but a good ritual spell card for Black Luster Soldier. Certainly better than its original ritual spell card. But then the two cards that really help this is Evening Twilight Night and Beginning Night. Both of these cards are very similar. Their effects revolve around if they're used as ritual materials to summon Black Luster Soldier. And essentially when they are, they give this vanilla Black Luster Soldier monster really good effects. They both share the effect that gives Black Luster Soldier the ability to banish an opponent's monster, and that effect is really good. How much Malevolent Sin is played is proof of that. Also gives him the effect to banish a card from your opponent's hand face down until their next end phase. This effect is really strong, and it's the best one that you can give Black Luster Soldier, denying your opponent card advantage. And the reason that's so strong is, let's say you get this out turn one, and you're going against Harpies, and you really away their harpy channeler it can win you the game by itself that effect is really strong and then beginning night gives him the ability to attack twice so these effects are reminiscent of envoy of the beginning 
Rising, and both of them make Black Luster Soldier a really good card. And I think the problem with this is pretty obvious. You have to use all these cards to try and make him pretty good, and so basically you have to build a deck around him, and that can create some issues. However, this Black Luster Soldier deck is also used as an engine in other decks, and it still sees Rogue play. The reason I'm holding it back from being in the good and great categories is just because it's useless by itself. And so that's Chaotic Compliance. It's okay. I mean, there's a decent amount of cards to pick up. Uh, predominantly, though, I would go through it for Baby Sarasaurus, just because I, I believe we'll get more dinosaur support and this card will definitely see play. So a half-off gem sale going after Baby Sarasaurus, I, I legitimately think is worth it. The fact that it's a rare makes it easy to pull. I think it's the best card in the box. And like I was saying earlier, it's good right now. And that's the funny thing about some of these older boxes, and I, I kind of understand why. Because they release cards that are really good, but they didn't have any support as rares and commons, because if you got them by the time this box was new, you just couldn't really use them. But now Baby Sarasaurus is, in my opinion, far and away the best card in the box. Alright, now moving on to the mini box for this episode of By the Box. Uh, Land of the Titans. It's bad. It's bad. Just like all the mini boxes before it, uh, there's really only two cards I feel like I can talk about here, but it does have a great card, which is going to be the only great card in this episode. Again, I'm on the brink of saying Baby Sarasaurus is great. However, there is a card in this box that I think is absolutely great. And you probably got your eye on it right now. It's the only limited card in the box, and that's Needlebug Nest. Needlebug Nest is very strong. At first, if you don't know much about Yu-Gi-Oh, its effect seems terrible, sending the top five cards of your own deck to the graveyard. However, keep in mind that one of the banned cards in Duel Links is That Grass Looks Greener. It has the effect to send cards from your deck to the graveyard until you have an equal amount as your opponent in their deck. So essentially, if you start with 30 cards and they start with 20, you get to mill 10. And that card is banned because there are a lot of cards that gain advantage and gain really good effects when they're sent to the graveyard. Needlebug Nest sees a lot of play currently, specifically in block dragon decks. It's interesting that the card can be used as a a combo starter it can be used for recursion and pairing it with like witch crafters and block dragon and light sworn and maybe some chaos builds of decks and as of right now outside of the light sworn engine which consists of charge of the light brigade and raid in hand of the light sworn it's the best card in the game currently to get a bunch of cards in the graveyard and like i stated earlier is something a lot of decks really want and that is why the card is limited to one because if you were able to run three Three copies and basically mill out your entire deck with a deck like block dragon you can otk ferociously if you do that so needlebug nest is great and it does make the box worth going through if you're trying to build block dragon or witch crafters or light swarms maybe any deck that you're building that needs to get cards in the graveyard it's probably the best one in the game right now so moving down to the only other card in the box I'm going to talk about, and I put it in the good category, is Obedience Schooled. If you control no monsters, you can special summon three level 2 or lower beast type effect monsters with different names from your deck. As stated earlier, summoning from your deck is very strong. Obviously it does have some downsides restricting what monsters you can summon, it also negates their effect, destroys them during the end phase, and then it restricts you from special summoning any other type of monster beside beast for the turn. And all of these restrictions are in place and definitely justified because summoning three monsters from your deck is kind of stupid. And as of right now it does see rogue play in fable decks and melfi decks, and could potentially even see more play. Its effect is very strong, its restrictions are justified, and if you're trying to build one of these rogue decks, I know a lot of people enjoy Fables, myself included, going after this card is worth it. And that's kind of it for Land of the Titans. Again, it's pretty bad, but it does have a good super rare and a really good rare to get, so yeah, half off gem sale, not too bad. Uh, the ultra rares are, you know, they're not the worst thing in the world. It, their effects aren't terrible but they're not all that great uh, essentially when things are destroyed on your field you can special summon them at ridiculous costs and then they just don't do anything on the field so once again if you're trying to get a beat stick out easy on the field like black cluster soldier then just run blue eyes so that's going to be it for by the box episode four next time we do this series we're going to be doing crimson kingdom and dawn of destiny 
I thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you've been enjoying my videos. I would appreciate it quite a bit. And uh, a big shout out and thank you to everyone that's been supporting the channel, subscribing and leaving comments. It motivates me quite a bit and I'm really, really touched that people are enjoying the stuff I'm making. I'm kind of doing this on a whim, but uh, I'm finding how much I love doing this. So yeah, everyone that's supported me, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to keep at it. We're going to keep making content. And uh, I hope I just make it better and better for you guys that enjoy watching.